Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this afternoon, I have a book review for you uh, on a book that I think doesn't really get the attention that it deserves, and the genre that it's in doesn't really get the attention it deserves anymore either. Um, the book I'll show you is uh, this one, uh, Culture of Narcissism, American Life in an Age of Diminishing Expectations by Christopher Lash. Um, this book was originally published in 1979, and ever since has been a major sinosure of cultural and social criticism. Uh, the English literary critic Frank Kermode called it, not inaccurately, a hellfire sermon. It's really a wholesale indictment of contemporary American culture. It also happens to fall into a group of other books which share the same body of central concerns that I've been working my way through or around uh, in recent months. And those books would be uh, Daniel Borston's The Image, A Guide to Pseudo-Events in America, Guy Debord's Society of the Spectacle, Philip Reif's entire corpus, but especially Charisma and his earlier work from the 60s and 70s on Freud, and even the book that I'm finishing up today, actually, and expect to review relatively soon, uh, Tony Jutt's Ill Fares the Land. All of these books discuss some aspect, I mean it might be central, it might be marginal, but some aspect of social anime, uh, loss of community, and subsequent feelings of disillusion in that community. This isn't by any means a new debate, of course. In the field of sociology, at least, it dates as far back as uh, Ferdinand Tony's distinction between Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft, which I think is a distinction that was almost a prerequisite for the invention of modernism. First, a note on the word of Lash's use of narcissistic or narcissism. It was formerly a clinical term to diagnose an individual but I think one of Lash's claims that is that it's gone global, or at least that it's gone national in the United States. Lash doesn't really mean for the term to be a diagnosis in the strict, narrow, clinical sense, but it's rather a metaphor for the human condition in contemporary times. In his Argo, the word means much more than just a lack of empathy, or a tendency toward manipulative, manipulative actions or pretentious behavior. He says, quote, People today hunger not for personal salvation, let alone for the restoration of an earlier golden age, but for the feeling, the momentary illusion of personal well-being, health, and psychic security. So Lash is much more interested in the, like I said, the disillusion of communities and relationships that make us feel as if we lived highly individualized, atomized lives detached from the concerns of others. And the book spells out the ways in which these patterns are positively correlated with the rise of things like materialism, technologism, uh, personal liberation, you know, the bywords of 60s radicalism, and nominal egalitarianism. His few words on contemporary corporate America will strike anyone who has ever worked in one of these, uh, what I call, uh, organizational hellscapes. He states that corporate bureaucracies, quote, put a premium on the manipulation of interpersonal relations, discourage the formation of deep personal attachments, and at the same time provide the narcissist with the approval he needs in order to validate his self-esteem. Along the same lines of Guy Debord, who I mentioned earlier, the politics of narcissism is much more about managing impressions and managing uh, the illusion of human relations uh, more than actually solving real problems. It's all about hemming things in and making it look like they're being managed. And uh, Lash cites uh, JFK's disaster at the Bay of Pigs as an example of this. 
to steal from the language of still another late French thinker, uh, in this case uh, Jean Baudrillard, uh, it's all about the simulacra. In a chapter called uh, The Degradation of Sport, he notes that enormous amounts of corporate money have turned athletes into mere entertainers to be sold to the most prestigious sports syndicate. The central concept of the sporting event, the agon, the contest, the agon is the Greek word that they always used to use, has been displaced in order to sell products and personalities who will eventually be with the team for, uh, invariably be with the team for only a very short period of time after which they'll move on and make more money and have more advertisements placed all over their sports uniform and whatever else. Lash's political affiliations are also sometimes interestingly and tellingly misconstrued. Uh, even though he's often criticized for being a reactionary conservative simply because he points to the radicalism of the 60s as one of the desiderata that he considers for the cause of this narcissism, Lash's analysis is actually self-consciously informed by both Marx and Freud two figures hardly recognized for being popularly co-opted by various brands of 20th century conservatism. Those who believe that Lash is a blind ideologue, I think, uh, on either side of the spectrum, need to read him again and do so very carefully. He explicitly faults both the right for their veneration of the market's invisible hand and the left for their cultural progressivism. Lash is, in politics, above all else, I think, a democratic humanist. There's an afterword to the book, which he wrote about 10 or 12 years after it was originally published. And in it he says this, The best defenses against the terrors of existence are the homely comforts of love, work, and family life, which connect us to a world that is independent of our wishes yet responsive to our needs. It is through love and work, as Freud noted, that we exchange crippling emotional conflict for ordinary unhappiness. It might not sound like a prognosis abounding in optimism, and it's not, but it drips with the sincerity of an honest, heartfelt critic of American culture. I certainly can say I don't agree with everything in here, but everything is definitely thought-provoking enough to think about. Culture of Narcissism, American Life in an Age of Diminishing Expectations by Christopher Lash.